Korean religion, philosophy, and intellectual tradition. Christianity. In this next section of the lecture, we're going to examine the introduction of Christianity to Korea and how Christianity adapted to the local context and then developed as it went through the different eras. How did Christianity gain popularity in Korea? Christianity was first introduced to Korea through the Catholics through China. Uh, and it has actually a history of self-conversion in Korea. So whereas Catholic missionaries would go out to different countries and evangelize and try to convert the natives to Christianity, in Korea the situation was different. So during the Joseon dynasty, as Koreans were traveling back and forth from Joseon to the Qing dynasty, they were exposed to Christianity there. And the problem was that eventually the converts to Christianity came into conflict with Confucian ideology and the state, and then this caused problems. So Christianity first spread among the literati, the Yangban, and this is because as they were exposed to and started reading translated texts from Latin to classical Chinese, they became very interested in Christianity and self-converting. So they would bring these texts back with them from China into the Joseon dynasty, and they would discuss these with their contemporaries and their peers, and they would and they slowly, one by one, converted to Catholicism. So the first to convert was Hong Yuhan uh, in the 18th century, and the next was Yi Sung Hun. Now both of these individuals, they rejected ancestor rituals. And so although in Confucian ideology, ancestor rituals play a very, very important part of the family rituals because the family is actually the foundation of society in Confucian ideology. It is important to practice these ancestor rituals, honoring your ancestors, but also understanding and appreciating where you come from and honoring the, your relatives. But these early converts to Catholicism rejected ancestor worship because they felt like it was worshiping false gods. So they were called in by the state and they were executed. And the state decided to take such extreme measures by executing them because they felt that their refusal to participate in ancestor rituals, family rituals, undermined the family. And if you undermine the family and the family breaks down, society breaks down. And if society breaks down, then the dynasty will fall. In 1794, despite those initial executions, Catholicism and the rates of conversion increased. So in 1794, the Joseon government decided that they needed to stamp this out. So there were more arrests and executions. But by this time, a Chinese priest had then been smuggled into Korea uh, and was Oh, and he arrived in Seoul in 1795. There are more conversions that take place, and these conversions continue until about 1800, when approximately 10,000 had converted to Catholicism. Things really came to a head in 1801 with the Silk Letter Incident. So uh, because the government was arresting and persecuting Catholic converts, Huang Sayong, a Catholic convert, wrote on a piece of silk a letter. And in this letter, which was to be smuggled out of Joseon, sent to the Qing dynasty, it appealed to the foreign governments, such as France, to come in and to use military power to 
force the chosen government to allow the practice of Christianity and to stop the executions, but it also called for the Qing dynasty, the Chinese dynasty, to come in and set rule. This request for foreign help was Huang Saiyong's demise because this letter never made it to China. And once it was discovered, this was considered to be high treason because this individual is asking for foreign government to come in and intervene and to take over, undermining chosen sovereignty. So Huang Saiyong, needless to say, was executed. Even still, the number of converts increased and also the number of missionaries, Catholic missionaries being smuggled into Korea increased. So this increase in converts and missionaries, this continues through the 1830s. And instead of being confined to the Yangban elite class, the conversions then start to occur amongst women, commoners, and Jungin, who are the middle people, they are a secondary status group. Now, some of these Confucian scholars, they also read the translated uh, Christian writings, and they began to argue on an academic level that Catholicism was not a viable belief they felt that it was immoral because it turned people against their king. They felt that it was irrational because, uh, for example, um, if Adam and Eve were the first sinners, why did all of the descendants afterwards have to be punished? They thought it was antisocial. Uh, because they felt that this was not in the interests of society, but only in the interests of the religion. They felt that it was selfish because it focused on individual salvation rather than the harmony and order of the society, and they thought that it was illogical. Is Jesus Christ the Son of God, or is he the son of Adam and, Adam and Eve? Which one is it? So. Confucian scholars, they argued with the Christians based um, on, on the scholarship and on an academic level. However, things came to a head again in 1846 because of the continued arrests and executions. Um, the, the French missionaries that had been smuggled into Korea were discovered and some of them were executed. However, one French missionary was able to escape, went to China, told the French officials there in China what was going on, so the French felt that they needed to send a military expedition to punish the Koreans. Uh, so they sent these warships, they told the Koreans that they, they needed reparations, they actually suggested signing a treaty, but the Koreans were not interested in this. As far as the Koreans were concerned, this was an illegal religion. These people, the French missionaries, had come into the country illegally, were staying in the country illegally, and so the chosen government felt they were fully justified in their actions. However, even despite this, there were still a growing number of converts. So by the time we get to the end of the 19th century, even despite attempts by the government to, to clamp down and extinguish the Christian problem, it was still growing. So there was criticism um, among scholars of the government's inability to control this problem, and coupled with foreign pressure at the end of the 19th century, we have the French coming, the Americans coming, uh, a Prussian merchant coming. Uh, this is all putting pressure on Korea. So in 1866, the ruler decides in Korea to execute 
whatever Catholic converts they can find. And about 8,000 were executed, and the priests go into hiding yet again, and the French forces arrive, and there is conflict between the two, military conflict. And so from the Josen perspective, these Christians are actually quite violent and quite aggressive. Here is a uh, illustration of the French invasion because the French had superior firepower. They were able to come in and they were able to damage quite a bit uh, at Kangwa Island. And in the process, they also stole many um, artifacts from Korea. And in fact, they are still housed in French museums, much to the dismay of Koreans today. And then we have the Protestant Christians, and they begin to arrive in 1884. So this is after Korea has been opened, but after the unequal treaty signed in 1876, and they start to sign treaties with Western nations, including the United States, the French, the British. Um, and once they sign a treaty with the United States in 1882, the first missionaries arrive. And the first was Dr. Horace Allen, who arrived in September of 1884. However, in December of 1884, there was a violent political coup d'etat where many high officials were either murdered or seriously injured. One prince was injured severely, had sword wounds, and Dr. Horace Allen, uh, he came and he was able to nurse the prince back to health. And as a result of that, he won favor of the court and became the court physician. Following Horace Allen, other Protestant missionaries also arrived, including the Underwoods, the Appenzellers, and the Scrantons. However, the Christians knew that this was an unfavorable climate for Christianity. So the mission policy directed from the United States was to keep a low profile. They knew that there was political upheaval. There was recently this political coup d'etat. So they said, we must be cautious. There cannot be any open evangelization and that any steps they take should be slow and measured. So as a result of this, they decided to pursue two types of indirect evangelization, the first being medicine and the second being education. In 1885, Dr. Horace Allen opened a hospital. This was the Kwangyewon, or the House of Extended Grace, and it was initially financed by the government. Because he had curried favor with the government, he was able to receive funds. Later on, the government, though, ran out of funds, and so um, it was financed by Louis H. Severance, who was a philanthropist and wealthy businessman in Ohio. He had heard about the troubles that they had heard and decided to sponsor the, the hospital. And this is what is later, will later on become Severance Hospital. Um, so these medical missions were an indirect form of evangelization because they felt that, well, if Western medicine, which can help cure people, is associated with Western civilization, then Koreans will make the connection between Western civilization, Western medicine, and Christianity, and then will become more open to Christian beliefs. So this was kind of a cure-all, saving lives and saving souls as well. Another indirect form of evangelism was education. So they felt that if they could teach about Western civilization, that this again would allow Koreans to become more open to Christian beliefs. So initially there were three mission schools established. The first was Peje, then Iwa, and then Gyeongshin. So as mentioned in 1884, 
The first missionary, Protestant Christian missionary, arrived in Korea in 1885. Peje Hakdang was established. And at the school, they taught the Chinese classics, history, reading, geography, arithmetic, science. So this is a mix of traditional subjects with new Western style subjects. Um, and in order to attract sons of the elite class, uh, sons of Yangban, they needed to teach traditional subjects such as classical Chinese because all of the official documents were still written in classical Chinese. In 1886, Mary Scranton opened the very first school for girls, and this was Iwa School. Because most girls from an elite background did not go out in public, it was actually very difficult for her to first recruit students. And because there was not a history of formal education for girls, it was also very difficult. So the first, schools, first students that she recruited were actually impoverished or orphans. So when Christianity was first introduced to Korea during the Chosen Dynasty, the state was actually very opposed to it because they felt that it was subversive to the state. It undermined family values, and if it undermined the family, which is the foundation of society, then the society would crumble and the dynasty would collapse. Um, they also felt that because of the silk letter incident that this was high treason, that this only reinforced their view of Christianity as being subversive to the state. But their views began to change with the introduction of Protestant Christianity in the 1880s. And because these missionaries were very strategic about trying to rehabilitate the image of Christianity to the Koreans. So they began opening um, medical facilities, educational facilities, things that the Koreans could, could, very, could very much use and could learn from. And so the response was actually quite positive. These are the keywords for this class. Christianity, French invasion, missionary and medicine, mission schools, 